I have to start with my own life and just be honest and say that I didn't understand joy either. So I was playing, you know, along with everybody else. I was as fake as everybody else. I would go to church and, you know, people say, how are you? And I go, I'm great. I'm doing fine. I had a great week. Where inside there have been some times where my heart was just breaking into a million pieces because of the struggles I was experiencing. And so when I began to realize I wasn't the only one who was faking it, I, I felt like I needed a definition of Okay, so if that's what joy is not just about smiling and looking good and telling everybody how you feel, but what is it really? I realize that joy is a, is a settled assurance that God is in control of all the details of our lives. It's a quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right and a determined choice to praise God mm -hmm. in all things. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, that's something I can do. That's something I can grab onto. It's not about what's happening to me on the ex um, externals. It's not about what's going on with the people in my life or where I live or what my job is doing or you know what my personality is like. It's not based on any of those things. It's on something that's deeper and more, more stable. It's, it's based on God. It's based on the fact that he's unchanging that he will never leave me, that even in my darkest times, I can still find joy. There is um, this incredible passage of scripture in Isaiah 45 that it says, God says, I will give you the treasures of darkness mm. so that you may know that I am the Lord your God who calls you by name. And that is a verse that I, I practically jumped off my chair when I first read that verse because it acknowledged the fact that, yeah, there's darkness. There are dark times in my life. There are dark times in everybody's mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Christians lose loved ones. Christians go through divorce. Christians experience mental illness. Christians lose their job. I mean, it's not just people who don't know Jesus who struggle. We all struggle. And so God says, there, there's darkness, but I'm going to give you treasure. I'm going to give you treasure, and it's going to be so that you'll know that I'm the God who loves you. Mm -hmm. I'm big. I'm the God who, who's transcendent, but I'm the God who's personal. I call you by name. And when I realized that there could be treasure in my, in my deepest darkness, mm -hmm. it opened up this pathway for joy that I had never experienced before. Always before, I would read about joy, in, in, particularly in the New Testament, mm -hmm. and I would look at these people in the New Testament, like Apostle Paul would say, you know, I've got, I can't even hold all the containers to contain all the joy. There's no container big enough to hold the joy I experience. Or mm -hmm. James would say, hey, when stuff happens in your life, when bad, stuff's happen bad stuff happens, count it all joy. Mm -hmm. And I would compare that to my life and see this grand canyon-sized gap. What the Bible said in my life, and I thought there's no, there's no comparison between these two. But when I understood that even in the darkest times, that God was with me, that Jesus Christ was a man, not just a man of sorrows, but was a man of joy, and that his life gave me permission to seek a life of joy for myself, then I could look for those treasures in the darkness. And I have found them. And it has nothing to do with what's going on externally. It has everything to do with developing an intimate relationship with the God who loves me, with Jesus Christ who died to bring me back to God mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit who has given me joy as a birthright. Not anything I can earn, not anything I can work up to, not anything I can go through these 10 steps and find, but it's my birthright. And it's for every, it's for all of us. Joy is within our reach.